So, Isabella, you're going to love this. You can use divides here. <laughs> Suppose I have the greatest common divisor of two integers. Then if I take A and divide it by D because it's divisible, I can do that. I wouldn't have written it this way. Just letting you know I got this from a book. The greatest common divisor after I divide out the greatest common divisor of the first two, I get one. So let's work some examples. That's what we're supposed to do. Um, let's take four and six. What's the greatest common divisor of four and six? Two. Too easy. And if I take, if I divide four and six by two, I get two and three, and the greatest common divisor is one. So four divided by two is two, six divided by two is three. The hardest math you're gonna get today, I think. No, you have numerical analysis, right? All right, good. Let's let's go. So here's my no. This is what I got from my nose so far. Yeah, those are things I can get my hands on and use. The second part is harder to use, but I'm just going to write it down here. I'm just going to hold that. Like, I know it. There. Um, I'm going to make one more observation that A divided by D, which is in my show, and B divided by D, which is in my show, is really S and T from high school algebra. Everybody caught up with me? And the only reason I'm doing that is because I saw it in my show. So actually showing something as one is kind of hard. Um, what I really, what I need to show is that S and T, the greatest common divisor is one. So I'm going to rewrite that. that like that's hard because you don't have anything to work with. One divides S, one divides T. There's nothing really there. So I'm going to rewrite it like this. If Uh, I've got u's now. u divides s and u divides t, then u is equal to 1. That's what I have to show. So this part here that I have right here, 
that bounces up to my no. So anytime you do a show and it's an if then statement, the stuff that's in the if part goes up to your show or to your no. So I can use that. And, um, you know, I don't know any other way to have, un uh, unless you just ran circles around this for a while going, how do I show one is div divides, one divides everything. I don't really have anything to work with. So you kind of have to sit there for a while and go, how do I get anything out of this? And, um, and then sometimes you've seen it before. So now you've seen it. If you ever have one and you have to do something with one, I might give you something on homework that has something with one in it. That's what you do. All right, so let's scratch out this proof. This is a good day. This is a great way to start the day. My friend said that I, I was mean for making you guys go to the boards and write a proof this early in the morning. Right. This is like a great way to start the day. Yes. He doesn't know cadets, right? Things could be worse. <laughs> Yeah. Do you have saber metrics with them? Is that what you? Oh, yeah, but it's still a good class. I was actually going to give you guys uh, a choice of doing some programming in here for the next homework. So you're going to pop up some of the no to the show, or show to the no other way around. I'm running out of letters. So this is not my clean proof, so I don't want to put like by definition of divides and all the preambles. Since you're writing on a sheet and not slides, somewhere in your sheet you have back what um, S, S and T were. So you can pop that in. by my no, um, A equals D times U times D, uh, sorry, I like this, write it like this. And pop those in for S and T. So earlier on your sheet, we had these nuggets that we boxed off. That's where that comes from. You got to have a sense of humor. So I used to actually try the more letters I used to have the letter spell out something. We have an L and a Y left and we have ugly. <laughs> I tried to see if my, my teacher would notice. They didn't notice. All right, Isaac, how are we doing? Okay. Well, since I got you, I should have done the associate law, but I'm, this is not my clean proof. And the clean proof, you actually associative law, you can pull things. But if you go back and look at what it's here, if there's a U on this side right here, that means U divides A and U divides B. By the definition. So remember I said hold that at the beginning? U is the C. But 
but then u's got to be one by definition of uh, greatest common divisor. Okay. Right? Greatest common divisor said if there's any other divisor, that divisor has to divide d. I'm done because this, well, I could have, I didn't restrict it, but restrict it to the, let me go out of my preamble, restrict it to non negative integers. I have that. Use an, an integer, right? So I have this property. Because if u divides d, uh, I mean, if d divides, uh, u divides d, and and I have that it's also small, it's got to be smaller than the, anything else that divides also has to be smaller than the greatest common divisor. By default, right? If you have another divisor, then that divisor has to be smaller. And then I just go through and wipe out the d's and I have u's between zero and one. And the only integer that satisfies that is one. Use not zero because you divide, right? So it's a non-negative integer. Done. So I'll write up a clean version of this so you can see all the stuff that's written in there for the low section of MA103 can understand it kind of version. Um, and then I don't know if they have that, but they used to do it. Um, and then you can see what the clean version looks like. All right, you have three minutes to erase your boards. Oh, should we leave some of this? I feel like <laughs> we left you a present. <laughs>